Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. This week I'm going to do something a little different. It's been a while since I made a Wii related video or shared my first impressions of a game. As Xenoblade Chronicles just came out this past Friday, I thought I would make a quick video covering what I think of it so far after spending about 6 hours total with the game, which is barely scratching the surface. My main reason for doing so is that I think the game isn't going to get the attention it deserves. Sure, all of the Nintendo centric channels will be covering it, but for gamers who just own a PS4 or an Xbox One, I expect they will barely register its existence. Granted, it's still very early days, but from what I've seen of the game so far, it has an open world that rivals the likes of The Witcher 3, Metal Gear Solid 5, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, or any other game you could care to mention. Let's take a stroll around the starting continent of Primordia, take in some of the sights, install some probes, and fight some monsters. As you can see from this footage, the graphics of Xenoblade Chronicles X are hugely impressive. Now, these do come at a price. You either have to endure some rather lengthy loading times, or if you have a hard drive or decent sized USB memory stick, you can install roughly 10 gigabytes of, of data packs which speed things up tremendously. You also could just buy the digital version of the game to begin with of course, but again you're still going to need the space. Luckily I bought a hard drive for my Wii U about a year ago, a purchase that I've been questioning ever since, but it's finally paid off. So on the surface, X does share quite a lot in common with the first Xenoblade Chronicles, as the palette of battle abilities along the bottom of the screen is quite similar, and the MMO style auto attacking also returns. But the further you get into it, the more it differs from its predecessor. There are quite a few different systems in the game all layered upon each other, and I think the game does a pretty good job of introducing them gradually and teaching you what it all means. Very early on in the game you will join the Blades, which are a military organisation protecting the human colony of New Los Angeles on the alien planet of Mira. These guys do all sorts of tasks, from protecting the citizens from the deadly wildlife, to setting out recovering parts of the White Whale, the ship that crash landed on Mira, and setting new nav probes so we can survey the planet. There are eight different divisions within the Blades that you can join. I went with the Pathfinders, whose job is to install the navigation probes and to discover new areas. Other groups include the Interceptors, who are all about tracking down the deadliest monsters known as Tyrants and taking them down, and the Prospectors, who are tasked with tracking down mineral deposits so humanity can continue to make weapons and armour, among other things. On top of that you also have a class, which dictates the abilities that you can use in battle. Everyone starts off as a drifter, but when you reach rank 10, you can then choose from one of three more advanced classes. I went with the one that focuses on offensive capabilities. Further on in the game you'll get the opportunity to choose another advanced class branching off of this. The other major thing to mention, which you won't really see in this gameplay footage today, are the scales. These are the mech suits that you will be able to pilot later in the game. They allow you to reach more areas of the planet, such as super high mountains with no real paths up to the top and of course they will also allow you to go toe to toe with the bigger monsters in the game. There is a disadvantage to them however, when you die on foot there is no real penalty, you just go back to the previous checkpoint and can carry on what you were doing. If you die in a skull though, you have a very limited window to press a button, or one of your valuable insurance tickets is used up. If all three of these are expended, then your skull is blown up for good, and you will have to spend a huge amount of cash on a new one. This sounds like quite a bummer, and it's not something you can really avoid by save scumming, because you are only given one save slot. So far, I am extremely impressed with what I've seen of Xenoblade Chronicles X. Open-minded gamers who don't yet own a Wii U, but love this sort of huge RPG, should strongly consider buying the bundle that comes with this game. With other titles like Super Mario Maker and Splatoon available, the investment is well worth it. I'm going to shut up now and let you enjoy the spectacular visuals for a while. <laughs> 